So let's welcome Angelo Rossi to the live stream. Angelo is a network architect at WSP. They're a global engineering and environmental consulting firm. And Angelo, I understand that one challenge the company's had is that they've grown by uh, mergers and acquisitions. So that means IT inherits a diverse amount of equipment, diverse devices, running diverse configurations. So what would that mean for you? Well, just to put things in context, so in the past five years, we more than doubled the number of employees. So right now we're around 55,000 employees globally. Um, and we haven't grown really organically. It's really, really by M&As, as you just mentioned. So obviously, when you do a lot of M&As, you inherit, you know, the equipment of the other company, which most likely than not, does not really align with, you know, the global designs and standards that we put in place. So, you know, just a simple task, just as, you know, for example, aligning the VLANs globally, when the port description are all different, when, you know, let alone recreating the gateway in the proper location, so imagine doing this, you know, to 3,000 switches of different models, different vendors, different versions. It's very, it's a very difficult task to achieve. So, so the, appeal, oh, the appeal of Glueware is that they've got a tool that can handle any number of vendors that are already in your environment and maybe more that will come. Exactly. So the first requirement, because of all, you know, this, we inherit this type of equipment, which is all heterogeneous. The first requirement of an automation platform that we need is to be very flexible. And by flexible, I mean, it has to be able to grab all the all the information uh, that's available, not only the running configuration, but also the output, you know, of different network protocols, for example, uh, protocols or services, for example, like CDP, you know, span entry or things just like MAC addresses. So all that is very key uh, for us to be able to use an automation platform and that type of heterogeneous uh, network. Um, and Gluer is something that is very good at uh, to grab all that information. Okay, so it's very clear we're working in a brownfield network here and automating in a brownfield is, is tricky. Uh, what is it that you were trying to accomplish? Well, uh, well, obviously it's to align you know, the, the configuration with our uh, global um, standards and designs. And you know, as I said, it, 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 the key here is really to be able to grab all that information that's available to you know, change to, to the proper change to uh, the proper port, for example. So a good example on this would be, you know, just try to understand where the where the access points are um, are plugged to in order to, you know, output some spanning tree, specific spanning tree like the video filter, for example. Don't, don't want to get too geeky here, but um, just to be able to, you know, grab that information, or just understanding where the WAPs are plugged to, that's that's key for us, for example. So what can can you rely on? Can you rely on port description? Not really, because they're probably all different. Can you, but what we can rely on is maybe CDP if that's enabled or MAC addresses. So all that, it, we're able to grab a lot of information, put it in a structure inside Glueware and treat that information according to what we want to achieve. And another point I'd like to add is like, because we're a global enterprise where we're quite big, we also have a third party handling our IT support. Um, and you wanna make it you know very easy for them to manipulate um, the automation platform. So another key element on top of being able to grab the information is to create a level of abstraction. And that's also very difficult to achieve in an automation platform. And with Glueware, um, on top of a Glue Lab uh, that we're probably gonna talk to uh, shortly, mm -hmm. we're able to create that level of abstraction that we require to make it very, very easy, you know, for the end, you know, the operator to actually use the, um, the equipment, the, um, the automation platform. Okay, so I understand that network configuration and change management is one of those baseline requirements that you absolutely have to get right. What was your experience with Glueware and your configuration management? So our NCCM, obviously, you know, as, again, we're, we're, a global, we're a global company, right? So we have a lot of each, each, even each management process is very complex. So we have a lot of layers of approval to be done in our CCM. So as part of an automation platform, what you really want to make sure of is, first of all, that the end state actually correlates with what you want to achieve. So right. sometimes it works, you know, in a specific environment, but when you go to another environment, um, it might not be the same, you know, end state. So one, one thing that Glover is very good at is you know exactly how it's executed. So it basically thinks as a network uh, operator or engineer. So it, it, you know exactly what the end state is. And there's also the, the, the Glover watchdog that makes sure that it, it stays in that end state. So that if somebody goes in manually and changes something, Glueware will, will be aware of it and will just change it accordingly. Um, 
Yeah, yep. that's got to be valuable in a large global distributed organization with people touching things all the time to have that one location where you can say, oh, yeah, we see that somebody went in at five o'clock, uh, you know, in Europe and made this change. Absolutely. And now we know why, you know, this uh, outcome happened. Exactly. So also the configuration audit, uh, all that is all, is all handled uh, inside Gluer. Uh, so our, you know, our security team, our, our, our knock can also take a look at what has changed. Um, so the other key here element and part of, you know, that is related within CCM is um, we can actually uh, operate, you can actually um, interfere, I mean, with the NCCM platform. So you could do, for example, API calls to ServiceNow uh, that will be able to, you know, maybe make things take a little bit more easy on the, the management process uh, around an IT uh, change. So you can skip some middle part in it and interact directly from the service now to the, the Gluer uh, API and, you know, do the proper execution uh, without requiring more people to work on it. That's mm -hmm. also something that we're looking for. Okay, so cutting down on the manual steps to actually get something accomplished. Exactly. Okay, now you mentioned Glueware Lab earlier, and I understand Glueware Lab, you know, we've got these out of the box things you can do right away, but Glueware Lab lets you do some custom autom automation. Well, exactly. And as I said before, we're looking for a level of abstraction that is, is quite quite high. So a good example here is, um, you know, we're, 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 um, we're a big global company, but we're also regional focused, right? So instead of, you know, for if out of the box, for example, Glueware will allow you to do, you know, um, a bunch of features, but it will be basically uh, assigned to a region. For example, you can do like a simple banner change. You can add that feature. It's already out of the box. You can use it. But for our scope, we have different banners depending on which region they are, right? So instead of having, you know, different nodes attached to different features, we, all, we want a single feature, you know, to put this. Uh, this is a very easy feature, but I just want to, you know, make it as clear as possible. So in, in my case, I'll create like a feature for a banner that will be regional. So in the same feature, you'll have a banner for Middle East, you'll have a banner for you know North America. And all that feature is the same feature applied to all our nodes across the board. So you'll not have different features for different nodes. And that's key for us, again, to create that level of abstraction to make it as easy as possible. The other thing I like to accomplish eventually, we don't do it right now, but it's also, as I said, to integrate with ServiceNow and avoid, you know, middle step that can definitely be avoided and make things more efficient. So with workflows, you can do that. Um, I haven't used it again, but it's, it's going to be part of our, our strategy. So why go with Glueware Labs as opposed to, you know, Python scripts or Ansible playbooks? Well, I mean, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, it, it, these are good products, but they're they're very good at, because they're very flexible as well. So you, with all that, you, you're you're able to grab all the information you need. But there are many drawbacks. First of all, you need there's a steep learning curve, obviously, with all these products. Mm -hmm. So that means you probably need you know a bigger team and look that that automation part uh, and skilled employees as well to handle it. Um, it's also different difficult to create a level of abstraction using those those those, um, those platforms um, and obviously enterprise support. So you don't have enterprise, you typically don't have much enterprise support on those, those um, platforms. Right. If somebody's just running, you know, their own Python scripts, they're the support. Uh, and they're the support. Sort of, they, they take that knowledge with them as well. They get calls at midnight. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you don't want those calls. All right. Well, thank you, Angelo. So coming up next, we're going to get into a conversation about the limits of scripting and playbooks. We started that conversation. We're going to continue it. Uh, you're going to hear from Greg Farrow from the Packet Pushers and Glueware's Michael Howe. And we'll be back in about 10 seconds.